Welcome to Cosplayland! I am Alice and I have decided that when I grow up I want to be a cupcake. In this video I'm going to be making a hoop skirt and a petticoat to go on top. If you don't know what a hoop skirt is, it's basically a skirt that has something called boning inside, some kind of like wire or plastic armature that makes it go like very puffy and you can actually control the shape so depending on how you do it you can make it look like a triangle or you can make it look something more like a bell which is the shape i'm going for this kind of hoop skirt even if it was like something from the 18th or the 19th century i don't remember which one exactly right now because i'm not a historian so it was very um, it was very common to wear this kind of skirt to make dresses look much bigger than they were but without having to use a lot of fabric and it was also very fashionable in the Lolita fashion which is a type of fashion that takes a lot from that times but makes it like cuter with shorter skirts so what I'm going to be making today is this Lolita style with a bell shape which is going to be a shorter hoop skirt that hopefully is going to be the base for my Shizuku cosplay. Of course I could go the usual way of just wearing a petticoat or two petticoats, I have several at home, but I saw this clip on the anime in which she just turns around and you can definitely see her legs and you can definitely see that she's wearing a hoop skirt and also petticoats tend to have like that A-line, that triangle shape that I was talking about and I don't want that, I want mine to look more like a bell so it's like more round at the top so I want to control the actual shape of the actual skirt. The best way to do this is with a hoop skirt. There are several ways of making a hoop skirt, you can do it just with some ribbon and just the wire but I figured out that that was going to be a bit messy because I would need to just measure each one of them and sew by hand each one of them. I don't want to do that, I want to be able to just do it all in one go with my sewing machine. So basically I'm just going to be cutting strips of fabrics which are kind of like rectangles and it's quite easy to make but at the same time it's a little bit complicated because you need a few maths to get them to work correctly because of the shape and the length and the actual circle. It, it actually took me longer than I would just care to admit to make the hoops, this hoop skirt work and it also took me a while to figure out the right materials to do it which I will talk about in the video later. But basically I just made a pattern that you can download with the actual dimensions so it should be very easy to use follow the instructions and cut the rectangles already on the right shape and with the right length and it should take less time than the time it took me to figure out all the numbers and lengths and how long and it, it, was, it was painful, it, it was a lot of maths. The problem with hoop skirts is that the wires inside the hoop skirt can sometimes be visible if you're not wearing a petticoat on top and I thought that it would be a good idea that if I was doing a hoop skirt I would also do the petticoat as well with the right length because the petticoat needs to be a little bit longer than the hoop skirt so it doesn't show and I have already done all the maths for you so as always if you want to save yourself some time you can download the patterns and I will leave you a link in the description. This project took me much longer than I expected because things go wrong all the time and you know I didn't have the right materials I had to go for more materials three times so I really hope you find it useful because I think this kind of shape is very useful for several cosplays and once you do your petticoat you will be able to use it for several things. This is how I made my hoop skirt and my petticoat. I started by folding my fabric in half and placing my pattern on top. As I said, the hoop skirt is basically made with rectangles and I am going to need several pieces to create the several circles. I decided to go for four tiers of equal lengths and each one gets shorter towards the top to get the shape I want. My pattern does not have seam allowances, in case you want to finish your edges differently from me. 
Personally, I am going to be covering my seam allowances with bias tape, except for the one on the side, so I will only need 1cm seam allowance at the edges. Using a ruler is a good idea to make sure your edges are straight. Notice that I made a single template with several lengths, so I could save some paper and some time cutting pieces. You can just fold it to get the different lengths and keep the pattern for future projects. Also, you see me here using white cotton because it's cheap and lightweight, but feel free to experiment with colors and materials. Once I had marked all my pieces, it was time to cut them. Yay! This is the full lot, not including the waistband. I am also cutting the petticoat now, or trying to cut it. I don't think I have mentioned yet, but in this channel we use cuts to keep the patterns from moving. Or, or maybe they move extra with the cut. Once again, we will need several lengths of each piece. Going back to the petticoat, we can now assemble all the pieces together. First, I will be making each piece for each tier into a single length. I am making French seams on my petticoat and I already explained how to do this on my bloomers video. They take a bit longer to make, but I think they look neater from the inside. Of course, you can sew a normal seam or use an overlocker to finish the inside. You should end up with four long pieces of fabric. And now it comes the tedious task of ruffling those strips. First, I will sew two lines of basting stitches to the top of each tier. And now, you have to find the front, back and sides of each tier before you place your fabrics right sides together and gather the extra fabric from each piece so it matches the tier above. Pull from the bobbin threads of the basting stitches to slightly ruffle your fabric. Once the tiers match, you can sew them one by one. Your cats will go hungry during the process. Once your skirt is in one piece, we are going to start adding the channels for the boning. For this, I am going to use bias tape, but you can also use twill tape instead. I will start by adding the tape to my hem. And here's my first attempt at introducing the bunny. I tried first with something called Rigeline, which is a very lightweight polyester boning, but as you can see, it did not keep the shape and it twisted badly whenever I left it alone. I decided to order another type of boning while I kept sewing the channels with more bias tape. At least I could finish the rest of the skirt while I was waiting, right? Right. I ironed my waistband in half and also I ironed the seam allowances inwards. I show you how to make this in detail on my bloomers video. I just need to gather the top of the skirt to fit the waistband. Don't forget to leave a gap and sewn at the back to introduce the elastic. And once the gap was closed, I just had to wait for the boning. In. 
For my second attempt, I chose plastic boning. I had high hopes for this material as it is lightweight and quite stiff and still quite affordable. I really thought this was the right choice. I was wrong. In an attempt to fix this, I decided to make my bone channels narrower, as I noticed there was too much room for the boning and maybe that was the reason for all this twisting, perhaps? So I went ahead and remade all the channels. Did this solve the problem? Yep, still doing it. It will stay when it wants to. I just hold one side and it will be on the side. Uh, this is a nightmare. Right? Let's move to the heavy players. Steel boning. That's what we need. Everybody knows heavy metal is the solution to everything. I taped the edges of my boning so they wouldn't poke through the fabric and I inserted it on my bottom hook. Which by the way, it was now too narrow and I had to unpick. Lucky me! By the way, cutting this metal boning can be a bit tricky, so I recommend folding it on itself several times and trying with very sharp, strong cutters. And don't forget to tape the edges together. And now, it finally worked! I just need to change all the other bones. But you know what? I'm not going to do it. Don't tell anyone. I figured out as long as the bottom hoop keeps its shape, the tension would keep the others in place. It is not perfect, but it saved me some time. And it is also a little bit cheaper. Let's carry on with the petticoat. Same as before, I am just going to sew the pieces of my tears into one continuous length. And I am going to hem all the edges of my fabric pieces except for the waistband. I ruffled the bottom edge of the skirt with a ruffler foot, because it was quicker for me and I have it, but you can use a basting stitch as before. Once it was ready, I placed the ruffle on top of my main skirt and sew it in place. I steamed my ruffles down so they will still keep some volume, but pointed downwards. And as I ran out of fabric for the waistband, I had to settle with a folded edge with cotton ribbon inserted. Just keep in mind that this made my petticoat slightly shorter than I would have liked, but it's still a viable option. Once I closed any gaps left in my skirt and my petticoat, this project was finished. Despite all the difficulties, this project turned out exactly how I had envisioned it. And it just shows you that sometimes you just need to keep trying until it eventually works. Remember, I will leave you a link in the description if you also want to make a petticoat like this one. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see the dress I will be making to go on top of this petticoat. I hope you like this project and I will see you in the next adventure. Bye! You comfy?